Hello guys, welcome to the Train Power. In today's video, I'm going to do TA using the number of views of my YouTube channel for the first time. This is something that I have never seen anybody doing. I'm going to go into detail in how to achieve this, how I managed to get all this data into TradingView. Then I'm going to show you how I can do even RSIs and stochastic RSIs of external data, which is something that I couldn't find an answer, but finally I found a way to code this. So don't worry, you don't need to have any background experience in coding. This is just going to be interesting from the point of view of how to achieve it and also from the point of view of the actual insights that my YouTube views are giving me when it comes to the price action of Bitcoin. Guys, if you like this type of content, Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell to get notified every time I put out one of these videos. If you're looking for my video about the FOMC meeting, I already have one video about that. This is just for you to have fun and learn how to do something really, really interesting. Imagine you have external data that you have in a spreadsheet, one column with a number and another column with a date. How can you plot that in a chart to start with? Well, I did a little bit of digging and I found this script on TradingView, which is called how to import and offset CSV data. You can see an example in here. This was created by someone called Alanster, which is currently a wizard of PineScript. And we can even see the open source in there. So I took all this code and I asked for a little bit of help from ChatGPT to modify the code so it can import all my data. But regardless of if you understand PineScript or you have no clue what you're seeing in front of the screen, you can tell that the data is in here. So he plot six points of data starting from 15th of May 2024. And that is pretty much what matters. What we need to do is basically export from my YouTube channel each and every day how many views I got, which I already did. I'm not going to bore you with that part. You can see in here that I have already done the job and the first day that I went live or the first day I have a single view at least was the 11th of October of 2020. Before that, my channel in YouTube didn't exist. And on the first day, I got 15 views on my first video. I still remember this full week seeing the views. And every day I got a little bit more excited when I got 36 views on one video and I was celebrating it <laughs> with my wife in the living room. I remember those days in COVID, not being able to go out and just putting a lot of attention on how things were going. Notice that I have to split the data into five separate data sets. And that is just because the array cannot hold the 1600 rows of data into a single array when you're calling array from. At least that's what ChatGPT told me to do. So I just left it like that, just like it came out from ChatGPT. I could have done it manually, but these days I'm kind of spoiled and I get ChatGPT to do everything, literally. If you want to get access to this code, I will say you can either search for this guy, Alanster, and then find the how to import and offset CSV data. I can give you a link in the description. Literally, I just took this and ChatGPT filled my arrays. You can do it manually as well using an editor. After you do that, you add it into the screen. So basically the script contains the data as opposed to other indicators that use data internal from TradingView. And this is how it looks. It looks precisely the same as when I see it to the YouTube studio. You can see it looks just the same. I just did the export from here and then a little bit of data manipulation to get it in this format of comma separated values as opposed to multiple rows in a CSV, which is pretty easy to do. Hopefully you know how to do it just by doing search and replacement with a text editor. So you don't have to do it manually because it's going to take you an eternity. I personally use regular expressions to replace the space for a comma 
and then in just one move I got everything in this format. Okay, that is when it comes to how to get data to display on TradingView. Let's say you already have this part. Now, what can we do with this? So before I start introducing additional indicators that use this data as a source, like RSI and other ones, which is gonna be really interesting, I'm just gonna do naked eye TA. Imagine this was an RSI and you had to do TA. What would you say? Well, we have a higher high in here and the views went lower, okay? So what is that? It's a bearish divergence. People lost interest in the channel around this area in here. We could even connect it like this because technically that is the point of touch that we get on this high. We had a spike day there that went against that bearish divergence, but the divergence occurs on 10th of November. We also have in here a short that I upload talking about the FTX crash and that was a huge spike in views. Indeed, for a long time, it was the video <laughs> that was mostly watched. So we can ignore that data and we're gonna have to because it's kind of an anomaly in here to do the analysis. It's gonna create some false positives in terms of exiting the market because it goes so high, even higher than this, that it makes it look like we are about to top when we are actually about to bottom. So ignoring that, we can move forward and we can see that the channel in here is starting to get more views as well. And it gets to a high of almost 15,000 views in a single day around 24th of November. Since then, retail came in here in hordes. They were crazily getting bullish with this breakout. And as soon as we reach 108, search for Google on Google Trends and on different indicators and their actual positions reduce dramatically into this move into 89. And they haven't come back. So in here, we are having a spike in views, but it's a lower high relative to what the price is doing. Can we say that that is necessarily something we need to react to? Well, I wouldn't say that because in this area we have a high and we could potentially produce a new high in here if retail comes back. In all this area, retail peak here and then we got less there. But this is beginning of 2021. This is the year that Bitcoin tops. So I think that I'm not necessarily going to say that that bearish divergence in there is confirmed. What else can we do with this data? We can bring in any indicator, for example, just an RSI or a MACD. And then we can go to RSI and instead of close, we can pick TTP YouTube views, which is the name I gave to that indicator that contains the data. And then with the MACD, I can do the same and we get all these very, very, very interesting insights on what's going on with the channel versus what's going on with the views and Bitcoin price action. If you haven't noticed yet, this is RSI of my YouTube daily views. This is MACD of my views again. And in theory, you could trade a bullish cross of views on the MACD, get the whole ride to a high level and as soon as you see a pinch at a high level, use one of those strategies that apply to MACD, but in this case, ignoring the price, just trading the views of my channel. And this unfortunately cannot be automated and that is one of the limitations because every time that you want to add new views, let's say I want to add the views of today, you need to write down the number, save the whole indicator, which is if I do that and I save, focus on what happens in the chart. The two indicators at the top that I added, the RSI and the MACD are going to disappear. And that's because they are being, they are using the YouTube views as a source. And when the source saves, compiles, and gets re-added to the chart, all the, their children get removed from the chart automatically by TradingView. You can prevent that, for example, if you add the RSI and you have it connected to YouTube views, 
before you make any changes to this one, you go back to your RSI, you disconnect it, you put it back to open or whatever else, and then you can make changes to YouTube views without losing all the indicators. But that makes it a huge hassle if you really want to automate this and get signals with alerts because those alerts are going to have to get deployed every day as you add new data to this, re-add the indicators, set new alert for the new day, and that completely defies the purpose, in my opinion. Of course, if you want to do this automated, you can get that developer to write something fully automated download a lot of the data from YouTube, do the calculations with Python on RSI or whatever you want to do, and then create as well automation for alerts that go into your bots. And you can ignore, I did this whole thing with views of my YouTube channel, but you could do it even with the weather or other elements that are not currently available on TradingView, which is really interesting by itself at least if you want to do a big picture analysis like this one, it means you can, there is a way to do it. And I hope you guys enjoy the video and learn something that you can use in the future. If you did, let me know in the comments which ideas you have that you think you can take advantage of this method or how would you extend it. I'll give you a few ideas for homework. Try it out with the PNR. The PNR filter is the percentile nearest rank that you can connect with the YouTube views as well. And you can find awesome bottoms for reaccumulation. They are not all going to be great. Of course, you have to adjust the parameters, tweak here and there. It's flagging some tops in here, which is nonsense. But I still think that the opportunities are endless. And if you spend enough time doing the research, I'm sure you're going to have a good time. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.